near mint condition, the Homo Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. What's up all you minties out there? I am Domovex and today we are going to take a look at the Radiant Black Massive Edition hardcover. So strap in your seatbelts and let's get right started in here. All right, so this is the Radiant Black Massive Verse Edition book one year one deluxe hardcover published by image comics of the massive verse imprint which is under the black market narrative umbrella founded and owned by cal higgins so here's a look at the spine and a look at the back and as you can see right there black market narrative which is again owned by Kyle Higgins. This is a uh, 440 pages, 44.99, and there is also a Waltz Comic Shop edition which you can check down in the description for 39 euros, 39.14. This is going to collect the first 12 issues of Radiant Black, but I will also say that this also does contain a remastered issue 11 with upgraded colors which I will get to in a minute. Now, is this the first hardcover that Image has put out of Radiant Black or the Massiverse? No, as you can see here, there is also a Kickstarter of Inferno Girl Red, which is sort of in the same, but not really as far as the same universe is concerned. And this was my first experience with the Massiverse just as a whole. This is a book all illustrated by Erica de Urso with colors by Igor Bonti, Matt Groom on the, the writing as and the letters are concerned. But again, this is different in the case that this was a Kickstarter only, and you, I'm pretty sure you can find copies now there on the market. But the difference between the main and both is that, well, trim size is the same. Spines are a little bit of the same. But the difference is these have ribbons for bookmarks while the Radiant Verse, Radiant Black, I should say, year one, book one, does not have a ribbon anywhere to be found. This is sewn binding. I can, I think I can actually gladly say that this is sewn binding as far as that is concerned uh i i found the read to be quite nice although the binding has gotten a little bit flimsy at points um but it is sewn binding all right folks let's go ahead and crack open this book once again here's a look at the front here's a look at the spine here is a look at the back right there in text so Kyle Higgins has pretty much bounced around quite a lot of a bit in the comic sphere, and he was the one who does write this book. Here is a look at the front image, of course, Radiant Black presented there. A very nice splash page by the wonderful Marcelo Costa, who does most of the illustrations on this book. He is accompanied by David LaFuente. David LaFuente, who was on Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man, and most recently a Bendis book that I can't think off the top of my head right now. Sinister Sons, I believe. Yeah, Sinister Sons. Uh, that is what I most know him for, at least as far as recent stuff is concerned. So, pulled from there. Eduardo Ferrigato and French Carlo Magno. Marcelo Costa, God bless his heart, has also done the colors for this book, and I'll get to talk about that in a minute. But he does have assists from Natalia Marquez, Miguel, Miguel Muerto, Igor Monti, Rod Fernandez, Matia Ayacano, that is the name I most recognize on here. Igor Monti, I did mention earlier, did the colors for the Radiant, I should say, Inferno Girl Red book. I still have a propensity to call this the Radiant Verse instead of the Massive Verse. Rod Fernandez, as well as Sabrina Del Grosso, are also on Color Assists. And Becca Carey, right after I realized she was the letterer on Absolute Wonder Woman, does a lot of letters for Kelly Thompson's projects. I have, I think, found my new favorite letterer. 
I really, really appreciate all the work that she's doing, not only on this book, but a good amount, if not all of the Massiverse titles. Michael Busuti, Busutil, I cannot say anybody's names, but he is the designer and editor of this. So if you look at the way that this book is structured and the way that this book is overlaid, I, I have got to say it is top tier design work, design letter work. And as someone who is trying to make that into their hobby, I will say big hats off because it is not an easy job. It's very Tom Mueller like Wesley Griffith on the production artists as well. So like I said earlier, Kyle Higgins has bounced around quite a bit in terms of comics. I first noticed his name on a Scott Snyder pre-New 52 book called Batman Gates of Gotham. I think I gotta say, great design for all of the opening pages. And he did a pre-New 52 book with Scott Snyder called Batman the Gates of Gotham. And it propelled him to write the Dick Grayson Nightwing Adventures in New 52 and the Batman Beyond series as well. And after his office stint on Batman Eternal and Batman Beyond, uh, he went over to do another DC book right before he left called Nightwing The New Order with Trevor McCarthy on art. And he's done a lot of co-writing gigs and as well as solo stint gigs since then. He did a really nice Winter Soldier miniseries with Rod Reyes at Marvel I enjoyed. I also really enjoyed a Darkhawk miniseries that he did, probably because it had basketball. And he's also done multiple Ultraman issues and series, co-writing with Matt Groom, a frequent collaborator of his. But what he's most known for is the Power Rangers trip at Boom Studios. And he really, really revolutionized that line. Wonderful splash page there. Um over at at Boom Studios, and that is pretty much what he is known for. Year one, year two, fantastic stuff. And if you guys haven't read any of that, I think a lot of it definitely bled into the creation of the Massiverse. What is the Massiverse, you say? This was announced back in 2020 as part of a brand new sort of line that he was that he was introducing. It's not that Higgins hadn't done anything before at Image, Ordinary Gods, Hadrian's Wall. But I think he really, really wanted to push out a story. And this is a story I think he's had on the back burner for such a long time. Radiant Black follows this 30-year-old man, or a man who just turned 30, his name is Nathan Burnett, who's pretty much down in the gutters after his writing job for an app doesn't pan out, and someone who is, well, let's just say he is racking up quite the credit card debt at $38,000 down under. While he's at the bar with his friend, Marshall Ward, uh, his friend who is talking with him about pretty much, well, what he's up to, why on earth is he down so bad and why he's just so much down on his luck and why it just isn't working out for him. They go outside the bar after some drunkies happen and they find out about this weird black hole that's stuck in the middle of a train track that propels Nathan to reach out and well, I guess I should, should I say spoilers, spoilers for anybody listening. I'll cut that in. Nathan reaches out to that black hole and boom, he gets some superpowers. He doesn't know what to do. The police are after him because they're wondering why on earth a man is in a Halloween outfit in the middle of not nowhere, but just in the middle of any plane of existence. And as far as doing the costumes and the fit are concerned, well... Oh, let's just say that he's not exactly in the best or the tip top of shape. So the police are trying to figure out what's going on while Nathan is still trying to figure out his life. He's back with his parents. He doesn't know exactly what to do. He is stuck on writing a sentence, the best sentence that he can, because he knows, hey, like, I can do better as a as a writer. Let me go ahead and figure it out. We even have an issue where... He's stuck trying to figure out how to write a one sentence that will completely make or break the paper he's writing. And so we are now dealt with him 
stuck with the suit, stuck with these powers that he has no idea about. He doesn't know what's going on, neither does the rest of his family, but there are some really, really heartwarming moments in this book, and one thing I can say for certain is that this is something that I wish I got on sooner. I have so many friends, not only as far as the Nearman Condition community is concerned, but overall in real life will have been singing nothing but praises of this book. There was a $9.99 trade paperback, and I didn't jump on it because I don't really collect thin trade paperbacks. I'm more of a thicky collector guy, as you guys might know, uh, but this is absolutely something that needs to be put on your docket. And one thing before I do get into the rest of the second arc, because again, there are some spoilers in the first arc I don't want you guys to unfold that might you might already be seeing on these pages. This is a personal story. I think this is something that Kyle Higgins has had in the back burner of his, his career that he just hasn't had a chance to figure out yet or figure out how to put in words until he wrote this book. I think a lot of this comes from... His personal experiences too. This is something that definitely, definitely shines as far as this book is concerned. Kyle Higgins has not only made a fantastic character and characters in and of, of themselves in this radiant black universe, this massive verse, he also has found a way to make those people relatable to us. I can't tell you how many times there's a certain issue in this story where... His parents are walking in to his room and he doesn't want them to figure out that, hey, like I have these powers or I just can't figure everything out. So he lies to them and says, hey, like I'm working on a paper. I'm working on this writing gig. And I can't tell you how many times that I've been in the same situation where, yes, I know it's still very close to me. But how many times that maybe I was reading a comic or I was doing something or something YouTube related because I hadn't told them that I was interested in content creation yet. How many times I've told them, hey, like I'm doing something else and and not this thing that I guess I was supposed to be doing. And I can't tell you how many times there the amount of times in this book that those moments pop up. But there's so many instances where I really, really c could connect to nathan and what he's just going through as far as life is concerned he's not anything of the sort where he has everything figured out but kyle higgins has really found a way to not only strip the character down away from well the rest of his superpowers he's figured out a way to relate the character to so many different people and under make people understand why this character is going through the things that the way he is and the same i think goes for the rest of the characters that we'll get to talk about in the second volume in fact, in fact let's go ahead and do it the second arc pretty much follows up the, the first and they think i think kyle higgins realized as quickly as possible that this wasn't going to be a one-hit wonder that people were going to be completely invested in it issue six is drawn by david Le uh, david lafuente and this issue follows radiant red it is also co-written by cheris chen who coincidentally is the author of radiant red in addition to to all of this we have the second arc where pretty much it is a team up when we get introduced to all of the other radiant radiant verse massive verse characters in the Radiant Black book, uh, Megan Car Camarena co-writes the issue that features Radiant Pink, which again also turns into Radiant Pink, the miniseries. And on the screen at any given moment, I'll probably give you a, a list of all of the books that are available to get in as far as the black market narrative is concerned, it's not just this, it's not just Radiant Red, it's not just Radiant Pink, Rogue Sun, Dead Lucky. They have really created a vibrant universe of so many different characters that are introduced in the second half of this book. We're introduced to more of the mythos and we really get to understand what the existence is and why it's so prevalent and the real premise of what this book is. I mean, just look at the spread, man. It's absolutely incredible. And... Again, it's a testament, I think, to how strong Kyle Higgins is, not only as a writer, but also as a leader as far as getting these books out. Same with um, same with the editor. I cannot say his last name in fears of butchering it, but they have really done a wonderful job as far as the massive verse is concerned and how well-connected these books are and also how standalone these books are. The one thing I will say about Radiant Black is that if you want to just read Radiant Black on its own, 
you won't be confused as far as everything else is concerned. That means that you can pick up this book and not have to worry about Radiant Pink or Radiant Red or The Dead Lucky. You can just read Radiant Black as a standalone book and completely be fine with it. On the other hand, if Radiant Black really isn't your thing, let's just say that you pick up this deluxe edition and it's not necessarily the best thing for you, you can read Radiant Pink and enjoy that and still be completely fine off with the story. I want to also talk about a couple of other things that you can do to support the Massiverse. I really think that they, again, have built a really wonderful line of books and also a vibrant universe that you can explore in other parts. And maybe if they put out a deluxe edition of No One and Omar asks me to review it, I'll be able to talk about some really cool things behind the scenes that they did. The first thing that you can do is they actually have their own Shopify. I, I don't want to kill our sponsors, but... They do have exclusives there, whether it's stuff that isn't available in the direct market and was exclusive to Kickstarter only. You can definitely pick them up there. That is an option that you can do as a consumer. There is also an audiobook volume one that I believe is available. And on top of that, there is going to be a link in the description for an animated short that they did. Cal, that Cal Higgins is a filmmaker. He is a really, really talented storyteller and they were able to produce something in a way that I thought, man, that was that's just super cool. And to speak of, and last but not least for, I guess, the overview for what this book entails and looks like, let's go ahead and go over to chapter 11, because there is something that I would like to talk about briefly, and that is the remastering of chapter, or issue 11, I should say. Chapter 11, issue 11, I should say. I said that I feel like two, three, five times over. Forgive me. Chapter 11 got remastered because of a time crunch. You'll actually see that in the last however many or so months, Radiant Black has been hit with a lot of delays. And partly due to Marcelo Costa just doing everything. And by everything, I do mean everything. Pencils, inks, finishes, colors. It took a... It, it dipped as far as quality is concerned, and a lot of people weren't happy with the way that issue 11 turned out. You get to see here that the colors are more finished. They, they actually allowed him to remaster and redo a lot of what happened beforehand. So if you were dissatisfied with the way that they looked in the single issues, they actually did everybody a favor, Marcelo, I should say, and they retuned and reaffirmed an issue 11 that I think should be able to satisfy everyone as far as that is concerned. And you can see here that, again, the colors just look a lot vibrant. They look fresher uh, than the tones and palettes that we saw in the single issue. I unfortunately don't have uh, the single issue scans to show. But, again, hats off and kudos to the people uh, at the Massive Verse for allowing them to do that. All right, let's go ahead and look at the cover gallery because I feel like this is a nice, neat feature that they did. Um, I wish that the page numbers were on all of the book. Unfortunately, they aren't. This is, by the way, the direct market cover for the Waltz Comic Shop variant that they did uh, for all of you EU people. Uh, I wish they put the page numbers for the single, the single chapters, but I understand why they didn't. And with the placement of them, I doubt that they would have been able to put them through there anyways. Probably also should have mentioned that this is just as big as the other regular Image Deluxes. It's not as big as the Library Edition, but it is just as just as big and just as large as the Deluxe Editions. It's not standard size. And I know that it was also a... Uh, I had a it had a error on Amazon as far as the listing is concerned, but do not... Fear. It's the same trim size uh, as the other Image Deluxes, and that shouldn't be an issue in and thereof throughout. We're going to continue to go over some of the back material, more covers. Again, Becca Carey, man. I know that this is just a, it's a, it's a gimmick, but with the issue number that this is a part of, I can definitely say that she definitely had so much to do with the storytelling in that third issue. I think probably my favorite issue of the, the 12, and most of them, if not all of them, are bangers. If 
Felipe Watanabe, Marcelo Costa on color. Seriously, what a treat. What an awesome, awesome book. David LaFuente on variant. And I don't want to put on the covers, so you guys can think about buying these too. Let's talk about the behind the scenes. They do have a table of contents here as far as this is concerned as well. Uh, we can look at, well, a letter from Kyle Higgins and pretty much everything that went into the creative detail uh, behind the production and the start of what would be now the massive verse. Uh, here is a look at the design of Radiant Black and also the differences because, again, when you've done a series like Power Rangers for so long, it's kind of hard to differentiate between both of them. And I do understand that there are concerns. There were concerns, including for me. I have said it to so many people in so many different spots. This is pretty much just Cal Higgins' Power Rangers that he gets to own. And I could not have been more wrong when I read these pages. I'm really, really glad to say that they did a fantastic job in being able to not only differentiate the similarities that easily could have happened uh, between this and Power Rangers, but rest assured, there are no Megazords, and there isn't any of that of the sort. This is really a creator-focused project uh, from the hands of Marcelo Costa and all of the other creatives involved. Uh, the same thing happens for here. They, there are a couple of interviews that they do in the book. There's some process and sketches that they do for the series. Uh, here is a look at the black light issues as they are presented with the plates in and of thereof. Here's a look, too, at some of the radiant black boxes, as well as well, some people who I think they've gotten a chance to get a hold of. There's been so many, there's just been so many people who have backed uh, this project and really, really enjoyed it to the point where yeah, it's cosplayed. It is a beloved series. And again, I'm really, really unfortunate that i wasn't there from the start because if it, if i were it would i you know i wouldn't have been there but i'm really glad i'm into it now and again a big shout out to becca carey and the rest of the crew for for putting this together man i mean it, just an insane book insane time and a must read if you have not tried this out yet guys you will not regret it and if it isn't the book for you there are so many other books to enjoy and that as they say is that now, if you're looking to get this book at one of our sponsors, be sure to check out BD Cosmos, the Canadian leader in graphic novels. They have a physical storefront in Montreal, Quebec, and their website, bdcosmos.com, offers 25% off your order of over $99 or more and free shipping everywhere in Canada for every order of $200 or more. Their shipping care is exceptional. Your books will stay cozy through the rough Canadian weather and arrive to you in... Near Mint Condition! After checkout, let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way and you'll be added to the monthly $25 gift card raffle. Entries are valid for new and returning customers. Don't be afraid to call or email them. Ask them questions. Their staff is always happy to help guide you towards the right purchase. Visit their website, bdcosmos.com for more. B.D. Cosmos. With rewards and raffles taking care of customers in Canada. A. Eh? CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that's it for me. I am Dom of X. Omar will be back soon. I'm just taking over for the time being. But again, you be you. Take care and dominate the day wherever you go. And stay fresh, Minties.